So first one, how about f of x? Is that continuous at x equals 2? Basically, can you, is it defined at x equals 2 is what you would check first. Is it defined at x equals 2? Can you plug in 2 and get something out? Mm -hmm. So that would fail. This is not continuous. In fact, if you remember, we've, I think we've had this problem one very, very similar to it. What this is, by the way, uh, can you determine whether that's a hole or an asymptote? Could you figure that out? Why is it a hole? <coughs> it does, yeah. This is x plus 2, x minus 2. So your function is really x plus 2. Do you see where the x plus 2 is coming from? Use your difference of squares, cross out your x minus 2, you're going to get x plus 2. That's really what this function is. And well, at least that's what it looks like, is x plus 2. Only when I plug in 2, so if I cross those out, I'd say, well, yes, f of x equals x plus 2. But I hope you remember what I told you about domain. Domain has to be from the original function, not your brand new function. Remember we, when we talked about that? So x can't be defined at 2. We tried that up here. It didn't work. What this says is, if I were able to plug in 2, if I were able to plug in 2, how much would I get out of it? 4. Now, am I able to plug in 2? So what that says is, if I were able to plug in 2 and I got out 4, I have a hole at 2 comma 4. Can you make that jump? You okay with that idea? That says, all right, normally I would be this function, but I know I can't plug in 2. That means I can't get out the number 4. I can't get out that value. Just to reinforce the concept, would this be continuous at x equals 1? How about x equals 5? How about any other point besides 2? Absolutely. We're just talking about 2 right now. Now, let's move on to the next function. I, these look confusing, but here's all this says. This says, for everywhere except 2, you're now this thing. We, still, we have that here. But now, at 2, I have a point 3. So let's check the continuity now. Is number 1 satisfied? Is the function, uh, is the function defined at my point x equals 2? Yeah. Absolutely. It's right here. That's, that's the definition. Uh, is, does a limit exist? Does the limit exist? Yes, the limit exists. The limit exists. But now this point is 3. So when I go over 2, it says I'm at 3. That's what this one is right now. So it says, is the, is the function defined at the point? Absolutely. Does the limit exist for my function around that point? Yes, it does. Is the limit equal to the function value? So is this one continuous? No. No. Everywhere else? Yes, but not here. So no. This would be a removable discontinuity. I'm going to show you why right now. Okay. So firstly, we tried a point, right? We have this function, and we have this hole in it. So if I cover that up, this is my original f of x. True? I tried to plug in a point. Did I make it fit right? No, it doesn't fit right. Let's try the next one. h of x says, okay, now, it looks almost identical to g of x, except instead of having it, uh, x equals 2 defined at 3, we have x equals 2 defined at 4. Tell me, does the 4 fill in the hole? Yes. So by making a piecewise function and defining just one single point, we go, oh, well, how about this? Is the function defined at that point? Yes, it is. Does the limit exist at that point? Yes, it does. Is the function equal to the limit? Yes. That meets all three qualifications for having continuity of that point. Therefore, we say yes. That's a removable discontinuity. It means you, you identify one point that fills in the hole. Okay, if a function is continuous at each point between a certain interval, like AB, we can say it is continuous on the interval AB. So let's say if F is continuous. at every point between A and B
then f is continuous on a, b, the open interval. If f is continuous at every point, that means like, like over here between this range of numbers, it's continuous at every single point, right? There's no jumps, there's no holes, there's no asymptotes. It is continuous. We'd say it's, it's continuous on the open interval. The question I have is, what about the endpoints? And we're going to look at that right now. So what would happen, because right now the, this is open, right? It's not including the A and the B. How can we determine whether or not to include those endpoints with brackets or, or whether we can't? And we'll look at that just briefly. So f is continuous at every point, okay? We have f is continuous on the interval a, b. But what about the endpoints? And let's say this is our function path. Hey, would you say this function is continuous between A and B without including the endpoints? Mm -hmm. For sure, at every single point. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, would you say it's continuous at the point B? Yeah, the point's there, right? The point's there. Now, we don't have, here, here's a weird thing, we don't have a full-on limit because we don't even have one side. However, the one-sided limit from the left goes to the same value that the point B is defined at. Does that make sense to you? So it's going to the point and the point exists. You with me? How about the left-hand side? Does the limit, I'm sorry, is it continuous at the point A? at the point A. The limit exists from the right, sure. The point exists, but is the limit equal to the point? No. Then no, this would be kind of like a jump, right? If I, if I had this going this way, that would be like a jump continuity. You have that, that point that's not there. Uh, now, it's, it doesn't have that other side. So we'd say this is continuous on, well, how would we write that? If it's continuous from A to B, but it includes B and not A. How, how do I write that? One bracket, one parenthesis, sure. So this is continuous on, I know it goes from A to B. Again, does it include the B? Yes. The B. Yeah. The B, yes, because the point's there, the limit's there, it equals the same thing. How do I show that? Is that the bracket or the parentheses? That's the bracket. That says I include the point B. Now, it can't include the point A because the limit exists from one side. Uh -huh. The point is there, sure, but it's not the same. In general, here's what you have. I'll give you a more mathematical definition of this. In general, here's what has to happen. If it's con it has to be continuous from the left at <coughs> point C or continuous from the right at point C. So for continuity from the left, have the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x has to equal f of c. That's very, very similar to the third qualification for continuity that we just had, only this time it's a one-sided limit. So basically we're just checking one-sided limits and making sure they, they go to the point that is defined and that the point is actually defined. This is like the situation we have at point b, okay? The limit from the left exists. The function at C, well, in this case that's B, okay? The limit at the, uh, the function at the point exists and they are equal. This is like the situation for point B. Like point B. For being continuous to the other endpoint from the right, Had 
point C? Well, it's just the opposite limit. You have to have the limit from the right-hand side. The function has to be defined at that point, and it's got to be the same. This is like f of a. The limit has to exist. It does. The point has to be defined. It is, but they would have to be identical. So this is like the, the point A situation. In our case, it's not continuous at the point A. Would you like to see an example on how to prove this with a, a closed interval? Okay, I'll, I'll show you how to do this. It's a three-part it's not hard. Okay, it's just a three-part proof. What we're going to do is we're going to prove continuity for an open interval, which is relatively easy. We're going to prove continuity for the left and the right intervals, which are both relatively easy. So we have basically three limits to do. We, we've got to prove continuity in the middle, then prove continuity at the end points. So I'll write the question on the board, and then we'll, we'll go for that. So I want to prove that this function is continuous on negative 4 to 4. Inclusive, close interval. This again involves three parts. The first step, we've got to check the open interval. Got to check the open interval. The next step is going to be check the right end point. The next step is going to be check the left end point. So I'll write these out and we'll, we'll start here next time. So the right end point would be positive 4 from the left. The left end point would be negative 4 from the right. So you're going from the right on that. We'll figure out how to do this next time. I'll show you each little piece of this, and we'll determine that it is, in fact, continuous from negative 4 to 4 inclusively.